Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video, as you can probably tell from the title, we're going to once again talk about the dark matter. However, in this particular video, we may actually finally have a somewhat positive conclusion. Now, before we start discussing the actual paper and the scientist behind this paper, let's briefly talk about what it is we know or actually what we don't know about dark matter. So, the only thing we kind of know about dark matter is its influence on the universe. Specifically, we know that it seems to be holding galaxies together, it seems to be also influencing various very large objects in the universe, and there seems to be quite a lot of um, gravitational interaction between regular matter and the dark matter. But everything else is a mystery, we have no idea how it's doing it, we've tried to find it many many times for the past 30 years, as a matter of fact, um, if we were to actually put the balance sheet on how much money was spent looking for dark matter, I think a lot of people would be very mad because we could have spent this elsewhere. But one of the last experiments basically cost several um, hundred million dollars. And um, unfortunately nothing was found. Basically nothing so far was found and we don't really know why we can't seem to find anything. So in other words we can't really find any particles representing the dark matter. But this particular scientist that I'm going to talk about in a few seconds um, may have found a solution, as in like, we may have been looking at the wrong thing. We should have been looking at the math and the formulas. We may have forgotten to put a minus somewhere. So this person right here, Dr. Uh, Jamie Farns uh, from Oxford University, has actually done a little bit of calculations on, on his own and also did a, a few simulations using Python and um, basically and body simulations, which is kind of what um, Universe Sandbox is. And he discovered that, well, you may actually be able to get the same results as what we see in the universe if you actually focus on two things. One is the concept that uh, Einstein referred to as my biggest blunder. Uh, essentially, in his general theory of relativity, there was um, a kind of a miscalculation, or actually a calculation that didn't really make sense. And the major solution that he proposed back then also kind of didn't make sense. It was essentially gravitationally repulsive negative masses. So, kind of like mass that has um, negative gravity. Or in simpler terms, uh, negative mass. Basically, something that has minus kilograms of mass. And though the own paper I guess it kind of sounds a little bit cheesy. Uh, Jamie Farns actually did quite a lot of calculations and simulations, and he even created videos that are available on his super tiny YouTube channel that I'm going to post in the description below, so maybe he'll get some subscribers from this. But basically, his simulations seem to actually work out pretty brilliantly. So let me show you some of the videos and also talk about what he's actually proposing. So this is called Simulation of a Forming Dark Matter Halo. What you see here is matter, which is in yellow in the middle, and dark matter, that's basically purple stuff around it. But the way he describes dark matter here is literally negative mass. And over time, what this will create is galactic halo of dark matter. And it will look almost exactly how we define it theoretically. And that's actually one of the coolest parts, because this is the first time we were able to actually kind of simulate and at the same time explain how galactic halos may be formed. In this particular video, known as Driven Structure Formation in 3D, what you see is, um, well, essentially, this is the beginning of the universe, and then the actual matter and the dark matter spreads across and interacts with each other, and starts forming these very interesting megastructures and galactic formations that are really, really similar to the ones we have in real life. This, as a matter of fact, is kind of mind-blowing, because He's simulating these structures, and we kind of observe this in real life. And this is where it really gets interesting. This is actually what kind of got me, because we really see this in space. And a lot of the uh, larger galactic structures look exactly or very similar to this. Here's another video or another simulation that he created where um, the orangey yellow stuff is the regular matter and the purpley bluish stuff is the um, negative matter, and you can sort of see how it assembles itself into very large megastructures. And what you see on the screen right now, which is a simulation made by the scientist, is very comparable to this. This is actually one of the bigger superstructures we've discovered, known as the BOSS superstructure. 
And so what does this mean? Well, first of all, it means that his simulations using negative matter combined with positive matter seems to create a universe that um, we know and love. It seems to create what we actually see in space. Now, obviously, it doesn't explain everything, but it does explain a few things that were not really well explained before. Um, and obviously, this is still very, very early to say if it's actually true or not, but the idea is in itself quite brilliant. The other thing that this particular scientist suggests is that, well, first of all, we need more actual observations and actual uh, follow-up studies to try to understand if this is really what's happening. But most importantly, um, he does explain it in a somewhat interesting um, and also somewhat hard to imagine and hard to understand concept. Now, prior to this, there were a few ideas and a few theories that suggested negative um, matter before, but um, they were quickly refuted or basically refused by scientists because um, this idea suggests that maybe if there was negative matter, it would actually repulse itself, would become extremely low in density, and that's really not what we see in, in the universe. We actually see um, whatever that is, whatever dark, dark matter is and whatever dark energy is, as something that sticks together, or at least seems to um, clump together into large pieces. In other words, if I were to look at a typical galaxy, and here's one simulated in the universe sandbox, you see that these red spots represent the clumped dark matter. But in a sense, it's sort of around the galaxy, and if you were to accelerate time here, you would actually notice that it seems to interact with regular matter in a very different, very unusual way. It doesn't really get attracted to regular matter. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, um, if dark matter was just gravitationally attracted to everything, it would just fall into things like our sun, the black hole nearby, and probably stay there. But you see that in this particular simulation that um, uses the so-called dark matter halo, dark matter doesn't really fall into the middle of our galaxy. But it keeps the galaxy together. It keeps stars from flying away and from flying apart. And so according to the scientists, um, what we have here is probably a very unusual, very interesting, and very exotic, kind of like negative mass fluid. In essence, an unusual and very exotic fluid that has negative mass and has a very peculiar effect on both itself and on regular matter. Now, in layman terms, what he suggests is that, well, there is like a very, very large, um, almost like an ocean of this negative mass fluid where the positive matter just floats. So, in essence, it's kind of like if you spill a little bit of oil on top of a liquid. You know how if you have water and you put a little bit of oil on the surface, it doesn't really mix very well. It just sort of floats on the surface. And so, in essence, it's kind of like that, except in a very, very, very large scale. And in his paper, he also proposes or visually describes how this matter and negative mass matter actually interact. So if you have just positive matter, we know that it attracts toward each other and the acceleration here points toward one another. However, positive and negative have uh, their force of gravity acting against each other, but at the same time their acceleration is in the same direction. While if it's two negative mass particles or two negative mass bodies, their force of gravity acts toward each other, but their acceleration goes the opposite direction. And so taking all of this into account and putting it essentially into a visual simulation to explain how all of this uh, negative matter doesn't just fly away from each other and disappear completely, um, he thinks that maybe there is a way for it to actually be constantly replenished and created from empty space. And this is exactly what you're seeing here. It's basically negative matter being continuously replenished uh, just to kind of keep the balance of um, actual density of space. And uh, theoretically, or at least mathematically, it makes total sense. So in other words, this empty space that you see here um, constantly re replenishes the negative matter that then sort of affects both itself and the positive matter and then creates these beautiful megastructures and beautiful galaxies with their halos that we actually observe today. Now, um, for the most part, uh, this is, like I said, still in early, early steps. This paper was only published about a week ago from when I'm making this video. But most importantly, his hypothesis actually has a chance of being proven with um, a project that's currently on ongoing um, with several universities, including Oxford, where he works. And this particular project is actually to build an extremely large telescope known as Square Kilometer Array. 
this is going to be located um, in South Africa or actually possibly in Australia and um, it's planned to be finished by 2022. By then, hopefully, we'll have more information and more theories and possibly explanations to whether this is actually a viable solution to the problem of dark matter. And now I guess what we have to do is wait for follow-up studies, follow-up calculations, uh, people trying to prove or disprove his theory, and most importantly, I hope to actually hear a little bit more uh, from this particular researcher to see if he actually can maybe even explain some other things in our universe using this particular idea of negative matter. Now, the math behind it is not really simple, but if you are brave enough to read the paper and to try to understand it, it's in the description below, as is the YouTube channel on which I showed you the videos. And I guess the irony of all of this is, if he's actually right, then for the longest time, all we had to do is literally draw a little minus on the mass to basically explain the universe and what we see in it. Now, that's going to make a lot of people really mad because, like I said, we spent billions of dollars looking for this elusive dark matter. And I guess that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, in a sense, it doesn't really answer the question of dark matter um, to the point where I'm very satisfied with it, but his proposal and his theory is actually really, really brilliant. I actually kind of hope that people follow up this very soon so that I can make another video about this and possibly either discredit it completely or actually finally say that now we know what dark matter really is. Because honestly, um, it's been like, what, 20 videos that I made about this topic now and uh, I seem to be starting to contradict myself. Sometimes I say dark matter exists, sometimes I say it doesn't and it's all based on the science. Scientists have no idea and I think it's driving a lot of people crazy to the point where they're getting really angry. We really need to find out what this stuff is so that we can finally stop talking about it. Anyway, on that note, uh, let's uh, stop this here and come back tomorrow to learn something else. It's not going to be about dark matter, I promise, but it's going to be about something you may have not known before. And if you do enjoy these videos and you enjoy this channel, uh, maybe consider supporting it on Patreon and uh, also subscribe if you still haven't. Anyway, space out guys, I'll see you tomorrow, bye bye. Now, honestly, if this guy is right and dark matter is just a negative sign that we didn't consider before, oh my god, people are going to be insanely mad. The science is going to explode because this right here, this liquid xenon dark matter detector costs like $70 million to construct and they found absolutely nothing in it. Nothing. For years. And $70 million, I could have, I could have used that. We could have used that. We could have built things. Many things. And we found nothing. And it's a little minus that's missing. That's insane.